So let's review these sign conventions. What are they? If we have a resistor and we have the voltage across it like this and we have the current going through it like this, then we know the terminal relation is V equals I times R. This is called Ohm's law. If on the other hand we have a resistor and the voltage across is the same, but the current switches direction. Then what we have is an abnormal situation where, for whatever reason, we have to create a terminal relation, which is a negative I times R. This is unusual. It may occur. It's very rare that we have negative resistance although there are some devices called tunnel diodes that do have negative resistance curves. Um, but we're not talking about them in this class. We look at a capacitor. It's labeled this. Then what we know is the current is going to equal the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. If, on the other hand, the way we draw our circuit, the current happens to be in this direction through that capacitor, then we know that the current is going to equal the negative of the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. So this is the terminal relation equation that we're talking about and how the signs impact it. These signs, as we'll see later, impact Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, going on. Inductors, basically the same thing. We have a plus and a minus and the current going left to right. Then what we have is a positive situation and our voltage is going to equal our inductance times the derivative of um, the current. And the opposite's true. So this pattern holds for any passive device. And the voltage is going to be the negative of the inductance times di dt. Okay, now is where things get a bit confusing. Okay, what I wanted to do is Problem 219, this is the homework problem. Um, and let's just uh, review what we're trying to do. Number one, we're trying to do Kirchhoff's, find equations through Kirchhoff's voltage laws. Number two, we're trying to find equations through Kirchhoff's current law. And number three, we're trying to find equations through terminal relations. Okay. So, this is the problem as it's presented in the textbook. They did not draw pluses and minuses on the passive components. Um, they did draw the current and the polarity of this voltage source and the current and the polarity of this current source. So let's go in and make sure all these terminal relations are going to be positive. Um, I think there's a current right here I missed called I2. Okay, so I'm going to put plus and minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So all the terminal relations will be positive when we write them. This is good. Okay, so now when we do Kirchhoff's current law, call this mesh number one, we don't pay attention to the directions of these currents. The directions of these currents don't matter. What we're actually doing is just going around looking at the voltages. We're not looking at the currents when we do Kirchhoff's voltage law. I can't emphasize this enough. Mesh direction and current directions do not have to match. You don't, they don't influence each other. There's no part of the sign convention that tries to add any kind of relationship between these two. Okay, so let's write the current Kirchhoff's voltage laws. All right, so what are they going to be? We're going to have going through here um, V1 
and down here plus v5 and then coming up here minus v4 that's from mesh number one mesh number two start off right here we're going to have a positive v2 right positive v6 right we're going to come up here to minus v5 equals zero mesh number three Let's start off right here we're going to have a positive v3 and we're going to have a positive vs that's our source and a negative v6 okay so those are our three Kirchhoff's voltage laws from our three meshes okay so now let's do the Kirchhoff's current laws okay what we have is a is right here so that's the current source direction as stated in the problem so what we end up with is a is a trivial node right here and at that trivial node what we have is um, minus I1 minus IS because they're both leaving it okay now we're going to go to this node right here and what we have is I1 entering I2 and I5 leaving I go to this node right here we have I2 entering and we have I3 and I6 leaving and because they wrote I3 and I6 we've got another trivial node right here I3 minus I7 equals 0 okay now let's go through the terminal relations um, for the resistors let's cover them first so we have the voltage 1 equals I1 R1 voltage 2 equals I2 R2 voltage 3 equals I3 R3 okay now we can do the capacitors the current I5 is going to equal the capacitance times dV5 dt capacitance 5 I6 is going to equal the capacitance of 6D, V6 dt. And we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's it. Now, let's look at these, and this is where um, I ended the last uh, time. Okay, what I wanted to point out was that this current source is behaving more like a passive device. The current's going in the positive of the resistor, the current's going in the positive of this current source. So when we see a current source drawn like this, with a plus and a minus right here for the voltage across it, this is assuming it is charging rather than discharging. It's assuming it is taking energy out of the circuit. That's a valid assumption. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that assumption. So, let's say at the very end, we get a value like IS equals 2 amps and V4 equals 5 volts. Then this assumption was correct. Let's say we get at the very end minus 2 amps and V4 equals 5 volts then that means what? Well, it's actually discharging rather than charging. Let's say we get IS equals 2 amps and V4 equals minus 5 volts in our answer. So then our assumption was correct. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. no. It's discharging, right? And then the last possibilities are both negative and V4 is a negative 5 volts. And then our assumption is correct. Yeah. Now the same thing can be said over here, Vs. I mean, because this is drawn as charging. It's taking energy out of the circuit. See, it's drawn like a passive device. So again, we're assuming it's charging. So what I wanted to do is review uh, Kirchhoff's current law. We um, Put a node right here because of a trivial node, and we said 
let's see, minus IS because it's leaving minus I1. We put a node right here and correctly said, okay, uh, I1's going in, minus I2, minus I5. And then we put a node right here and we said, okay, good. Um, I2's going in, minus I3, minus I6. And then we put a trivial node in here, I3 minus I7, and they all equal zero. And the question is, why don't we have a node right here? And why don't we have a node right here? And why don't we have a node right here? Why don't we have a node right here? Couldn't I write equations for each of those nodes? All right, there's two major points I want to make. The first is that this is all one node. So let me redraw it so that you can see that it's all one node. So we have our current source going here, and we're going to go to one node. All right. It's just one node. Let's see, this was I2, this was I3, this was I7, this was I5, and this was I4, I6, and this was, that's it. All right, now, the question then is, why is that one node? Okay, so what I want you to think of is this as ground. It's tied to ground. And the pressure here is the pressure of the septic system. And then at this voltage here, V4, it's negative. And this negative right here of V5, and this positive and negative here of V6, and this positive and negative here of Vs, they basically are elevating the water pressure to a pressure right here that's that's um, V4 in relationship to this ground node. And that there are, this capacitor is elevating the pressure right here to V5 in relationship to this ground node. And this pressure right here to V6 in relationship to this ground node. And Vs is, is upping this one to Vs. So the pressure here throughout this entire thing, the water pressure here in this pipe is all the same. It's all the same right in here. So they are one node. So the two points are that we need to start thinking of voltages as water pressure. And looking at where the water pressure is the same. That's point number one. Now point number two is, okay, so this is a node. Why didn't we write an equation for it? Well, what would the equation look like? Well, the equation would look like what? Let's see, everything's going into it. I S plus I five plus what? I six plus I seven. Okay, so here's the proof. I rewrote the the equations right here. In this first equation I solve for I one. The second equation I solve for I two. This fourth equation I solve for I three. And I plug them all into the three. The third equation right here. So for I two, I substitute um, minus I5 minus IS. Right? So that went right in here for 2. For 3 I plugged in a minus I7. So minus 3 is minus 7. And then for minus 6 I just left it, threw in the negative sign, and basically I have this and this are equal. So it's a dependent equation. So what's the rule? What's the consequence of this? Number one, always search for wires and bundle them all together into one node. The largest node, the one with the most wires going into it, you want to choose to be ground. That'll simplify your calculations. And you have to do this inside a P-SPICE when you're simulating a circuit, too. I mean, the P-SPICE simulation won't even run unless you specify what a ground is. This gets back to the definition of a voltage as being a difference across the device. So you have to have a measure from two, right? From two, from two, from two. So we're going to end up with four voltages. We don't have a fifth voltage. This is ground. This is our reference. This is what all the others um, are measured from. So review. Two points. Number one, look for the biggest node by tying all the wires together, wires together. And number two, don't use it in your node equations.